You'd be forgiven for thinking that Space Patrol, a science fiction puppet series made in 1962, was a Jerry Anderson production after just a passing glance. But this, however, is not the case. Space Patrol was produced by the author Roberta Lee and Jerry's former business partner, cameraman Arthur Provis. Together, they'd all made The Adventures of Twizzle in 1957, which proved to be AP Films' first break into television. Torchy the Battery Boy followed, and after the first series was complete, Roberta parted company with the filmmakers, and the second series was produced elsewhere. Arthur and Jerry went on to make Four Feather Falls, during which Arthur left the company, and Jerry continued on to conceive the filmmaking technique dubbed Supermarionation. The rest, as they say, is history. Amongst all of this, Roberta Lee and Arthur Provis continued their association, and together they made Space Patrol. After Torchy was such a success, um, it started me thinking that Torchy was for very young children, and I know some older children watched it, and I thought it would be great fun to do a space series for older children. There wasn't anything around at that time. Well, Space Patrol came about, basically, um, because we got interest in, I think it was from ABC Television in those days, that the sort of science fiction thing would be possible, they'd probably buy. But we had to show a pilot first, and so we made a pilot in a filthy, dirty old garage in Shepherd's Bush. It was an expensive pilot to make because we needed to make all the, um, the that entire city in order to film the o opening sequence. And, um, and that was very, very expensive. And the gallosphere and all the accoutrement that goes with a space series. And we didn't have enough money to do more than 10 minutes. And we sold, I think, originally 26 episodes for two or three showings to ABC and the rest of the world we could sell separately. Notification from the control tower. Your receiving set is not functioning. So that's why we've had some peace. Arthur was always very quiet, very calm. Um, sometimes he used to get very frustrated and we used to get worried because we had lots of problems if you're working on a very tight budget. It's always some extra that you have to find the money for. And so it was always a problem. Um, but he was very good and very, um, very clever when it came to special effects. He was, I think he was wonderful. I didn't try and stop Roberta writing what she felt like because I thought if I make it easy to shoot, we won't get any new ideas. So I tended to let her write the most impossible thing to shoot. And then we'd have a meeting and sit down and try and devise and something would come out of that that we would never have got if we'd have sort of limited it. I mean, I think this is generally true. And some of the things were just, I thought, how are we, we going to shoot this? And we'd sit down, ah, oh, but wait a minute, if we did so and so. And then we'd, we would sometimes end up with something very good. I chose the puppets, decided whether they were right or not, um, and the music, and I was in for all the the sound effects, the dubbing, the editing. What happened? The lights are fused. If there was anything Arthur particularly didn't like, obviously we would, you know, go over it. We never, we would never agree to disagree. We would always talk until we found a point on which we could agree. Um, we had a puppeteer called Joan Garrick who was the best puppeteer I've ever worked with, either with Jerry or anybody. She was the only one that could really control those puppets for us. Um, hundreds of other puppeteers came and went, but they're terribly difficult to find. Because when you're leaning over that bridge, I mean, I've stood there holding them, and after five minutes, your back's breaking. I mean, how they did it, I don't know. And uh, the, we had another couple, Martin and Heather Granger, who were very clever at making things, making things work. They weren't the fabulous operators of Joan, but so we used her for close-ups all the time. I mean, she worked more than anybody. And then when there was two shots, we brought others in. Um, I know that uh, 
Jerry used solenoids for the mouth movement, which I was never keen on because I felt that they didn't move enough or they weren't big enough. But what I did do was put a solenoid in the head for moving the eyes from side to side. But I operated that from the camera. And it also helped me with the eye line. If they were fraction out, I could move the eye line to correct it from the camera, had two buttons, one each side. I had a very, I had a very good artist working for me called Jock Spears. And um, we, de we devised most of the, those, uh, the, the opening titles with the city. Arthur went around London and filmed quite a few of the buildings, which we then incorporated in the design. And we had a very good um, uh, model maker. So why was it that Super Mario Nation went on to thrive throughout the 60s, whilst Roberta and Arthur's collaboration fizzled out? Well, I think Jerry was probably doing things at the same time which I didn't know about, like Supercar or something. And he had Lou Grade behind him, so he didn't have so much fun at <laughs> your trouble as I did. It was very, very difficult to, uh, to do these programmes for the sort of money involved. Space Patrol endured through the years and was released on DVD in the early 2000s. Looking back on the series, Roberta remembered it fondly. I was totally gobsmacked at how good they were. I mean, I saw one and I, I, I telephoned a friend of mine and said, my God, it just could have been made yesterday. It, it, if it had been in colour, I would never have known. I would have thought it was made yesterday. Because it's so valid, you see, it's still so valid. More so now because children know that the things that I was saying about the planets um, were not untrue. Today, the series holds up and has garnered a big following. And now it will be available all over again from Anderson Entertainment.